Hey, welcome back to my YouTube channel, guys. This week, I think we're gonna go a little bit personal. So when you move to a different country, do you ever worry about the level of healthcare that you're gonna get? Well, today we're gonna talk about that uh, in terms of my own personal journey with uh, an issue that I had before coming to New Zealand. So stay tuned, subscribe below. I think you're gonna enjoy this one. I think it's important on my channel to talk about some personal stories to really kind of share and talk about what it's like for people that are maybe moving to a different city or a different country. And there's definitely some consistent concerns that people have. You know, I've touched on healthcare in general on this channel a couple of times, which everybody seems to be very interested in. And so I wanted to talk about another issue today. So sometimes when you are thinking about moving to another country, you're worried about is the healthcare going to be as good over there? Am I going to have the specialists that I need? You know, if you come with a, a pre-existing condition, like what is that going to mean? And so I just thought I'd share a story um, about my personal journey. So I have a history of breast cancer in my family. And so that makes me high risk. My mom had it, her sister had it, my cousin had it. And so I've been getting mammograms since I was 30 years old. And I've always had that concern in my head. I've seen specialists. I was, as I was getting into my forties, I was asked to have MRIs and just, because it's the type of cancer that if you catch it early, it's curable and you can deal with it. And so I wasn't gonna mess around with this because I am high risk, uh, but, uh, just a little personal story. When I moved here the second time, so we lived in New Zealand for two years, we were back in the States, and then we've decided to move back, and we were leaving in a couple weeks. And I just, you know, did my mammogram before we left, and I got a letter in the mail that said, we maybe found something, you need to come back in. And so I called and I was like panicking and I was like, oh my goodness. And so I called and they're like, well, it'll be like a month <laughs> before you can get back in. I'm like, no, 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 I don't have a month. Like I'm literally leaving the country in like three weeks. You're scaring me to death. I need to get in right away. And they couldn't find it just because they were booked up at the time. Normally, it's, I don't think it's really that bad, but pretty much it was a little bit harsh to find out in a letter for one. And then they worked really hard to find me someone. So I had to drive about an hour away to like a, like a small <laughs> farming community and, and went to a doctor there. And he was really great. Like he has been doing this. He was a radiologist, been looking at this kind of stuff forever. And, I'm, and he spent a lot of time with me, took a million pictures and like, let's just make sure that we check it. And so, and he even brought me in and showed me the films and, and he was like, I've done every which way. I don't see anything. I have no idea what they were talking about. And so that was such a relief for me, but still a little bit stressful when I think about moving to another country and like, what are my resources gonna be if something were to be discovered later on and happen? And so I was, it was still, I was pretty upset even that night. And it's just it's such an interesting story that at nine o'clock that night, <laughs> my husband got like, like just like kind of an update on his Facebook about an old friend of his from high school that has moved to New Zealand and is a breast specialist, like a breast cancer specialist. And I was like, what? I've never even heard of this person. Like, you know, they were more casual friends. And I was like, what? And she happened to move to Wellington where I'm moving. And anyway, I kind of got in contact with her and kind of told her my story and she, uh, <clears throat> and she's in Wellington and so when we when we got here I'm like I've moved I've lived in New Zealand I know what to do I know how to handle it so I helped her get settled and you know we became fast friends and you know kind of the rest is history and so that was really comforting for me to know that I knew somebody and she's like the breast specialist in New Zealand and that's so great and they do have really good facilities here I've I've always been able to get 3D mammograms and whatever else and especially in her clinic with her new um her new uh, contrast enhanced mammogram, which is like really great, uh, especially for somebody that's high risk or that sort of thing. So um, we will, I just, I went to her facility and I interviewed her and just, I just, I thought I'd share like what her services she offers, but also to share with you like my own personal experience uh, moving to a different country and worried about the level of healthcare that you're gonna get and um, kind of how it was really no problem for me here uh, in New Zealand. And there's, you know, there's public health and then there's private health 
and um, it was really great to have that. So um, if you're concerned about coming to New Zealand and the healthcare system and what they offer for different, I mean, I would look into it, you know, um, but yeah, I mean, it's just a really real story and kind of a cool coincidence and how we just like really kind of uh, hooked up and it really worked out in, <laughs> in my favor really. And so now that I'm in a smaller country with, um, Dr. Sandy, she like, she, I just know that she's going to be the one looking at my, my, uh, pictures and just making sure that and it's just this whole level of peace of mind. That was really great. And I just felt really taken care of and really nice. Okay. Welcome. We are at the breast Institute here in lower hut, greater Wellington area. And I am with, uh, Monica Sani, and she is going to share with us, uh, her vision and her story for how she started this place. And it's like, really amazing guy. So I'm so excited to have her on today and to talk about um, the Breast Institute. So why don't we just talk a little bit about why you started, your vision for this place, what kind of, you know, I'm just interested in like what women get when they come to the Breast Institute as opposed to going through the regular healthcare system uh, or other private providers. Yeah. Sort of thing. Thanks, so. Tara. So for all of you to know, I'm a patient as well. And when I think about my experience going and getting a breast screening exam. I think about how cold it is usually, the gowns yes. are like paper thin. I feel really vulnerable, even as a physician who understands what's happening, there's nothing about the experience that's enjoyable. And I'd really like to change that because it's a wellness check. And so when you're doing a wellness check, think about getting just your, you know, your cholesterol looked at or your blood pressure you don't feel that anxiety with it. And this should be the same because most women who are coming through are not gonna have breast cancer. But it's one of those exams we dread and I wanted to change that mm. feel. So a lot of what you see here is myself. Um, there's a lot of plants, it's very natural, it's not white. There, the gowns themselves are handmade by a seamstress that are thick. Really? And it's yes. a kimono. They're you know? nice. Um, so yes. I want you to have an experience where you feel like you're at a spa because for me, that's really where that's feeling a little bit like I'm taking care of myself. Right, and this is for women, and we love spas, right? So when I come in and you hear the spa music and like, the, you know, you just, you feel relaxed and it's just a really great environment. I, as you know, you've just heard my story um, and I've had mammograms since I was 30 and have had it all different places. And this place was like nothing I've ever experienced before. And you just feel really comfortable as a woman and it doesn't feel like you, um, I don't know, it just wasn't, it was enjoyable all the way through. And I think that if you see the comments on your website and just on Facebook, like people just love it. And it's so nice that we have a place where we can do that. In Thank New you. Zealand, so. And that means a lot. And every patient who comes in, we, we really want your feedback. And we do ask everyone, how was the experience? How was the mammogram? We've had a lot of patients mm -hmm. who had had one mammogram and never went back because the experience was so traumatic. Really? And so our point is we really want you to get screened. So let's make it more comfortable. Let's make the whole setup just from when you come into reception. Let's make it feel soothing, calm. Let's make sure when you get your mammogram, the room the mammogram is in has a beautiful green wall, something else to focus on rather than cold and clinical. So one of the things that should be we're trying to do in a unique way is a more comfortable or the gentlest mammogram we can do, which sounds oxymoron, but it's not. And so one of the ways we're doing that besides handpicking staff that are specially trained to take their time, really work with you, understand how sensitive your breast tissue is, your skin, how does it feel? We're also implementing this, which is called the MammoPad. It's been around for a long time, but as far as I'm aware of, we're the only center that's using this. And so the mammal pad is a soft, you can feel like, you yeah. know, feel it. it's like the nice, soft, foamy texture to it. So this goes on one part of the mammogram machine. And that way, when you are being compressed, there at least is a soft surface. And then especially around the bits where it go close to your ribs, because often women complain about that feeling of something kind of, you know, going against the top of their ribs or the bottom of their ribs or next right. to their abdomen. So we want to make that a much more comfortable experience. And wow, I mean, the feedback has been amazing. Yeah, you got I, to feel it. I got to feel it, guys. I've tried it myself. 
I tried it without it and with it. And what really made the difference was, she's right, when it folds over the machine, just hitting under here and hitting your ribs really, and it was like warm <laughs> and soft. You know, I mean, you still, we still, we haven't figured out a way to do a mammogram that's not squeezing. Yeah, <laughs> and someday, I hope and so. And someday, yeah. right. But As for a time being, this was amazing. And it just felt so much better with the nail pad and such a nice feature uh, to your mammograms here. So it's great. That's great. And I think then that goes back to, you know, why do we need to compress? Mm. Well, part of that is mm. when the tissue is nicely splayed out, which is from the pressure, I can see through it more easily and find breast cancer. So that's why the need of compression. But then there is a comfortable range of how much compression allows me to see well, but is not so painful, it shouldn't mm -hmm. be painful. So I think this is one of the many ways that we make that experience better. And that's what I want to experience as well. So I think of it as a patient, as a woman, this has been the vision behind my center. I haven't seen a place like this in New Zealand that I could point my finger and go, yeah, exactly, that's where I wanna go, mm -hmm. which really was my inspiration for doing it. Yeah, that's yeah. great. So why don't you tell us a little bit about the services that you offer um, that yeah. maybe be different than, I mean, we have the mammo pad. We know that you can get like 3D mammograms at other private institutes. And obviously here you're getting like a full experience. And let me just say, the staff is great. <laughs> they are. They are. They fantastic. are really great. So the receptionist is phenomenal. The the one that does the the mammogram is great, and you're just comfortable the whole time. And one of the best features is that you get to see the results right away. So maybe we talk about that a little yeah, bit, and exactly. then go into what you offer. So I think it's such a great point you're making. When you come in and you're getting a test like a mammogram, it's so much nicer to leave with, hey, it's fine, mm. rather than even if the experience itself was okay, to be wondering and waiting and waiting for two weeks or more. Yes. And waiting or having to contact your GP to get the result. I think when you come in for a mammogram, there's no reason why we can't tell you then and there. Mm. And then if we do, you know, if we find something, we do an acute pathway, which means we go ahead and say, listen, there's something that needs more investigation. If you don't mind, we'll do it right now. And we work with your GP. So if that means you need an ultrasound or additional imaging, so then we can mm -hmm. get all of that. Sort. So that way, at the end of the day, you have a plan and we have sorted everything and we guide you through that process so that you're not feeling alone or unsure of what's going on. And that's so much better. Like, like, I, like I told you about my experience in the States with I just get a letter in the mail right before I'm leaving for New Zealand that we maybe found something. So can you come in again? Like, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like the worst way to find something out. And then um, I've had screenings here, not here as well, that, you know, I get to know right away, but it's just the nurse coming in and saying, uh, yep, you're fine, you know, but like, you know, it's nice to sit down. I have to sit down with mine. I get to see everything. I could see that there was nothing. That's right. And like when you are high risk, that yeah. means a lot when you can actually see it. I think that's a really excellent point. So I think whether you're high risk mm -hmm. or you're just worried or you know someone who's had breast cancer, you just want to know, yeah. am I okay? Right. I think what I find, the first thing I will tell you when you come to the center and we finish the mammogram, you get dressed, and one of my staff, and these are hand-chosen people I brought with me who are beautiful people who just mm -hmm. want to help you. We bring you to my room, and the first thing I say is, you're okay. And then we talk about, yes. you know, I, I know that, that you can't hear anything I'm going to say <laughs> so until I true. say it's okay. And I, <laughs> one time I think I, I launched into all this information of showing the images and I, you should see what your mammogram looks like. I mean, this is the one experience where you get to see what you look like on the inside mm -hmm. and really understand what am I looking through? What are my ability to find cancer on this mammogram? Are there limitations? Is there times oh, where yeah. we recommend ultrasound because we know we'll have a better ability to find small cancers earlier, mm -hmm. even with the 3D. So we go through all of this, but I will always start with, okay, everything's okay. That's so good. Yeah. And like, and it's so true. Like I have never been able to see mine. Like I have been doing it since I was 30 and I'm, I'm 40, you know. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, I understand. Yeah. And so, but then to be able to actually see it makes you just, it's a whole nother level of peace of mind and that was just really great and you're so right like she was kind of in there when I was doing my mammogram I'm just saying like did you find something did you find something did you find something <laughs> you know and so she's totally right like you just want to yeah. know everything's fine okay 
now I can hear the details. And then so. we can go through it. And it should be a teaching and a learning opportunity. It's a, because some of the people who come in and say, well, by the way, I'm so glad I don't have breast cancer, but I have this pain and it's in a certain mm. location. And so a lot of times you don't get an answer as to why do I have the pain? And there's so many reasons for that. So we can really get into the depth and explore, is this something that's coming from the breast or is this something that's maybe coming from the underlying muscle or ribs? Could there have been something else that's going on? So let's answer those questions. And this is your opportunity to talk to me directly and ask those questions. Right, great. Okay, so why don't you tell us a little bit about the services that you offer? Yes. Like what, if I wanted to book a mammogram, what does that look like? What should I get? So the, it's really easy and that's how it should be. You go to the website, it's very simple, www.mammogram.co.nz. Hard, hard to forget. Um, and you go there and you'll see there's options for mammogram and screening mammogram, which is what most people need. So you can just book that. So that's one of the things we offer. We offer a 3D screening mammogram. What's the difference? Well, the 2D mammogram that we do in public screening or at some other centers might do, think of it as a front and back cover of a book. When we do a 3D mammogram, it's multiple images, so multiple pages in between. So we can see small cancers earlier and look through all the tissue much more easily. So that's one of the main services we provide. If you have a current issue, it's best to see your GP so they can send us a referral because then you might need a mammogram and an ultrasound. You can also book that online and we do remind you that we need a referral, mm -hmm. but our, okay. you know, our lovely receptionist will also call you even after the booking to make sure we have all the information. Yeah, she does. That's great. I think one of the services that really sets us apart though is the contrast enhanced mammogram. Mm -hmm. So if you've had this exam. That's what I have. So being that Tara is high risk, given her family history, and that's something you can talk to us about, and I can go through all the risk factors and determine if you're eligible. If you've had a personal history of breast cancer, this is the right test for you because you're at a higher risk than someone who's not had cancer. Basically what it is, it's a mammogram like you know and have experienced, but first we give you an IV injection of contrast or dye. Once we do that injection, we then take our mammogram pictures. And it has a much more sensitive ability to find cancers when they're teeny tiny. So the sensitivity is in the 90, you know, 92, 95%. Whereas a regular mammogram, the sensitivity, which means the ability uh, to find cancer, can vary somewhere from 60 to 85%. So that's why the contrast enhanced mammogram oh, is, wow, a really, a is a really good test, okay. but for the right person. And I don't expect you to really be able to kind of go through all of the, is it the right test for me? That's what we're here for. Yeah. So if you're not sure, call us or book online and ask the question. We can do an assessment and see if, if that's the right test. Yes, and like you can, if you just want to talk about breast health in general, you can set up an appointment with Monica. You can, you know, she's on Facebook, Instagram. If you just have a question, we do some question and answer days and, um, and that's a really great feature as well. And we like, and that's what we're here for, is to answer questions, to demystify mm -hmm. breast health. Because there's a lot, you know, we're not told. There's no owner's manual that comes with the breasts. Right. Right? And it would be nice because, and there'll be different changes you'll note through your life. Yeah. So what you experience in your 20s and 30s will be very different than what you might experience in your 40s. Mm, I think we recently true, talked about breast pain that happens in the 40s or 50s and you think, well, am I supposed right. to be Right, is there something what, wrong? What's going on? Should I get checked out? Yeah. And you don't know. And you so, yeah, know. that's true. Yeah. So ask Monica, she knows. And that's what I'm here for. I mean, all those years of training, um, Tara and I actually have this it, funny history of overlap yeah. of where we came from the States. I knew Tara's husband when we were in college together um, and then he moved away and, and a long story short, but I trained in the U.S. I, I was a nurse first. I mm. went to medical school. Mm, I did fun. yeah radiology training and then I did a whole year of just studying breast imaging so that I could do some of these services that we do here. That's cool and I think it's important to note that that the Breast Institute here um, that Monica runs is the only one that does the contrast mammogram. Like you can't get that anywhere else. That's and that's like amazing. And then I think it's also important to note that the 2D is what you get through the private hospital system. And then if you- Public. Want, I'm sorry, the public hospital system. That's right. And so if you want to get a 3D, you'd have to go to a private, that's right? right? 
and that's you know and she's not the only one that does that right. but <clears throat> just so you know the difference yeah um, I think that's important to note and that insurance if you have insurance would most provide Take advantage we'll of it yeah yes we'll but we do it, have so. a lot of patients who do self-fund um, and you can look mm. at our website at any time. Oftentimes we have specials going on, so yeah. helping. And it's not expensive. For something that you do once a year, um, and it could, you know, because cancer, breast cancer can be curable if you find it early. We can just get rid of it that's and right. you're good. And it's. I think that's such an important thing yeah. that we should emphasize. As scary as it is, you probably know someone in your life or a family member, a friend who's had breast cancer, but when we catch it early, stage one, it's the cure rate is 92%. Let me say that again. The cure wow. rate is 92%. So that is why we're always trying to promote people to come to screening because when you come to screening regularly, that's when we can find change and really make a life-saving decision there. As much as it might be a daunting test to think about, hopefully over time, we will all embrace some of the comforts that we're trying to do here everywhere. Yeah. But, and and then back to your point, we are the only place in New Zealand that offers contrast enhanced mammogram. It's a technology I've been, it's been around for 10 years in the States, in Europe, mm -hmm. Australia. So there are places all around the world doing this. And I thought it's about time that we do this. And some people who may not get an MRI because, or they should get an MRI because they're high risk, um, can get a contrast enhanced mammogram. It's a fourth of the cost. It's 10 yep. minutes versus 30. Um, and you're in a much more comfortable position than you are in the MRI. So there's some things to think about, but call us if you have questions. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, thanks for sitting down with me today. And it was so good to catch up and hear about that. So ladies or gents out there who have ladies in their lives, go out, get screening, get your mammogram. It's once a year. Uh, it's not expensive. And look at mammogram.co.nz. We'll see you next week.